Well, do we want to call to order at 620? Yes. Okay. You want me to do this, Aaliyah? I feel a little weird. Yeah, let me just get back to my agenda. <laughs> okay, I kind of, is there any public comment? <laughs> Hearing none, we'll move on to liaison, liaison reports. Are any of our liaisons here? Yeah, Chris goes here. Do you have anything to say, Joe? Yeah, uh, the hearts look great in the doors and keep up the good work. Okay, thank you. Any other liaisons present? Hearing none, let's move on to the next item on the agenda, which is uh, my report. My report, um, although Sean's gonna hear about it, we had a very uh, uh, difficult weekend uh, with the department in terms of uh, some uh, uh, serious motor vehicle accidents. Um, uh, and um, so Sean will tell you about that. Um, but again, my thanks go out to each and every member of the department for the work that they do selflessly and tirelessly. Um, and then we will vow to get the uh, video conferencing right the next time around um, because the video conference link needs to be on the agenda, which it was not. Um, to comply with FOA, and we also need a uh, closed captioning link to comply with ADA. Um, um, none, of those, uh, none of those occurred. So we will make sure that we are in full compliance uh, for the next meeting. Uh, next item is the COVID-19 update. Sean? All right, so um, COVID-19, um, going through it, uh, to, to date in Connecticut, uh, we're a little over 38,000 people tested positive for COVID-19. We have roughly 3,449 um, 3, deaths in Connecticut so far. Um, tested people tested positive were almost 700 more than where we were yesterday so that's still going on um, hospitalizations have come down which is a good thing which it's continued to trend down um, I understand the governor today the, the governor was going to open um, hair salons and, and uh, on Wednesday and he delayed that which is probably a good move right now um, we have roughly, a, we have roughly a hundred people in town that have tested positive for COVID-19. Um, we have over, I believe it's over 20 deaths in town, uh, to date. Uh, we, um, we actually had a lull about a week ago where we stopped, uh, getting, um, people testing positive for COVID-19 and in the last day or so. We actually had five confirmed today. I think it was one confirmed or two confirmed yesterday. So uh, we do, once the governor opens the state, we do anticipate some of the numbers going up uh, just because of um, just out, people out and about and doing things and being closer. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, we, uh, uh, during this whole COVID-19 thing, I think it's interesting to point out that um, our call volume has been down since last year. I don't have the percentage, but I know it is down. Uh, it's been actually quieter than normal. And talking with other neighboring departments, it, it's actually the same. They're all trending down. Orange, I think, is down 20 to 25% from where they were last year. Uh, based on uh, this whole thing and it's hard to figure out why um, if you would figure people are home people are cooking and there'd be more activated alarms or things going on but 
Um, people are just staying home. So uh, it's actually trending. It's our numbers are trending down. So it's actually a good thing. Can you break? We, we keep getting deliveries of masks in, uh, whatever we can get our hands on. Uh, got a few N95s in, we got some KN95s in, which is a good thing, but the KN95s, I don't know if anybody's seen the news, um, they're not as good as they're supposed to be. I think they're 30%, so we're checking on numbers and seeing if the masks are good or if they are not no good so we are currently working on that um, and uh, that's what I have for COVID-19 guys uh, we are still waiting for our fog machine to come in our fogger to come in our for the de uh, decontamination and once that comes in I'll let you guys know so cleaning hey, company Sean, I had a question about that the cleaning company is still coming in uh, twice, two to three times a week. On top of that, I have Joe and Anthony and Teddy wiping the firehouse down uh, twice a day to keep everything clean. We have uh, three or four air purifiers going 24-7 in the firehouse um, to try to maintain that. We had our HVAC company come in. They changed out the air filters up on the roof on the RQUs. And keep going uh, we're trying to be as uh, all the fire department business right now with all the firefighters and drivers is being done over zoom calls right now and any training that we could do or any uh, information we have to get out to them we are doing that at this point so we're continuing to monitor and as soon as it's safe enough we'll get everybody back together and we'll probably come up with uh, rules and right we have to be six feet apart and everything else. So it is challenging and we are going, we actually are going through quite a bit of uh, uh, PPE. Uh, every time we have to go on a call, everybody uh, wears gloves, some masks, and whatever else we would need to do at that point. So go ahead, Elia. Okay, that's all I have for COVID-19. Um, anything else, Ilya? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. We hear you, Ilya. Okay. Um, next item is the... Uh, uh, well, the only other thing I know with COVID-19 is that the new, the, uh, the testing uh, facilities in New Haven are underutilized. The one at the CVS facility in Long Wharf and there's another one on Chapel Street. So if anybody wants to get tested, they can go. They can go and get, they can go drive up or walk up and get tested. FYI. Ilya, is walk up open? And I got tested on... Uh, on Friday on Chapel Street, which is walk-up. Okay. Do you know if there's any other walk-up facility? Well, the CVS facility on Long Wharf, I think you drive in. Right. Um, they only but accept that's uh, that's a rapid that will that's a rapid turnaround. They'll you get the results, you know, while you wait, like within a half hour apparently. And now they're urging on uh, asymptomatic people to get tested. Hmm. Or you can uh, take a walk in the park on the corner of Chapel and Day. But most of you would probably prefer to uh, drive to the CVS location, I would guess. Okay. Uh, next item is the uh, financial statements. So Sean is sharing the screen. Can you see uh, the financial statement on my screen? Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, Going down, uh, we're current maintenance uh, machine. We're keeping an eye on that number. We should be okay to get through the rest of the year. That was where we went back and got the extra money at a contingency. That's where we see the $30,000. Um, so I'm going to try to get us through 
where we are right now to the end of the year. So we just have a new budget here. Um, we do have repairs that we have to do. Uh, we had a manifold issue on engine nine, which we had to repair. And we have some power that we have to repair. Um, so I'm going to do some of it here and I'll some of it. I can wait until July to do it. So um, working on that. Um, medical expense. Medical expense. Um, that is going to be an interesting line because that line um, is for physical. So what we're going to do is we're probably going to pull a, a uh, another PO to cover because uh, Yale Ock Health is not doing any uh, physicals at this point. Uh, for firefighter physical, so um, and we have people that expired, so it's just an it's just, they're in limbo right now. They're basically allowing them to continue until we can get physical dates and move forward on that part. So we've been in contact with them, um, and we're probably going to pull some of that money. And I talked to Tony about it, where we can uh, have that go over July and August to get those other people. So we're not automatically going to be in a deficit in our new budget year um, of July. With hey, Sean, are they, but do we have a waiver on the, uh, on the one year testing requirement? We do. Every, every department's in the same boat. So um, what they're doing is that everybody uh, physical, they're looking at the physicals from last year and they're just basically it's, it's uh, they're extending it right now, so we're, we're compliant that we have to be, but we can't get a fit. Especially we can't, we can't get a PPP test done, uh, pulmonary function test, and um, and we don't even know when we're going to be able to do that. The PFT test is where an air pack, so it's where you have to uh, go into a tube and knock the leaves off the trees, or right. Monkeys off the trees, and they don't want to do anything like that. That's suspended right now indefinitely um, because they don't want the uh, droplets to come out uh, through that and contaminate and get a stick. So uh, that the hearing test is uh, suspended until further notice, and stress tests uh, are suspended at this point. So. Um, we are working with everybody to uh, try to get them compliant as soon as it becomes available. But yes, we do have a um, we do have a, uh, a grace on, a grace period on that. The other thing coming out of that medical uh, expense line is some of the supplies that we're using for COVID nineteen and some other issues, some other things coming on uh, related to medical. So. We'll keep an eye on that line and see where it goes over the next month. And uh, remember, all the supplies we're buying, uh, whether it be masks, gloves, whatever other PPE, that's all reimbursable by the town by 75%. So the government's going to kick in 75% of that, and we're only on the hook for 25%. So right now we're floating the whole 100%, but. Once we start submitting, um, the town's going to get that money back. So we may need to cover it, but eventually the town will get reimbursed uh, 75%, which is good. Um, next line, cleaning custodial. That's another line we'll keep an eye on uh, because we're definitely over that line. And reason being is COVID-19, instead of having the cleaners come in once a week, having them come in two to three times a week and then uh, like once a month I'm having them do it clean so trying to keep the building as uh, clean as we can at this point hey Sean yes are you the meeting host what's that are you the are you the zoom meeting host uh, sure why what do you need can you let can you let me in on my other computer? It says please wait. The meeting host will let you in soon, so that I can you can see me. 
No, you don't see me in the waiting room. Or you should be in. Um, so cleaning custodial, once again, the extra cleaning that we're doing is uh, reimbursable at the uh, 75%. So that's good on that end of it from a budgetary standpoint. Um, Technical, technical, we're probably going to end up running over and that's where we're buying a bulk of supplies out of. So we're going to keep an eye on that. Uh, I think it's important to know most of these items that we're going to go over, we're going to go over, but we're actually not. Once the town gets reimbursed, we're actually going to probably be right on budget, if not below budget on a lot of these items, even though we're going over at this point. Um, We've actually had to use, and we're actually using our IT people more since we're more remote now. So having some issues uh, and that, so we're dealing with that on that end of it. So that line we're gonna we're gonna start to eat up pretty quick also. So um, about it for uh, at this point for uh, financial statement. Unless somebody has a question on. There you are. I'm sorry. Is that it? Okay. Next is uh, my report. Can you guys still hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. My report, um, like I said, calls are down, uh, just like other departments are. Um, uh, Friday, we had a uh, pretty bad day. We had about three o'clock in the afternoon, we had a uh, motorcycle versus uh, car accident on Litchfield Turnpike. Um, uh, where the individual's in pretty bad shape at this point. On top of that, on the way to that call, we had uh, an accident with Rescue One. As Rescue One was uh, leaving the firehouse, it got into an accident right in front of the firehouse. It actually uh, hit a car, and uh, the person in the vehicle needed to be transported uh, to the hospital. Uh, and she did sustain some injuries to her leg and hand. So uh, the truck is out of service until further notice. It Before I can even uh, use it again, it definitely needs a new tire and it has some body work that needs to be done to it. So we're in the process of getting an estimate together to find out uh, what we need to repair that and start moving on that. Um, if that wasn't enough, uh, that night about 1 a.m., uh, we got called to Ansonia Road and um, for a report of a motor vehicle accident with entrapment. We got there and um, we had to, uh, a 20 year old, uh, we had to cut a 20 year old kid out of a vehicle and transport him, and he later died at the hospital. So, it's been, uh, Friday was a pretty tough day for the entire department and um, actually for all departments, PD, fire, EMS. So, um, uh, that's basically what I have on that. Um, department, the firefighters are doing really well with uh, wearing masks in the building. Uh, wearing masks in the trucks, rubber gloves, um, 
keeping their gear clean, washing their gear frequently. If they go into a contaminated area or they, or if we go into a hot spot, they're coming back, they're taking their gear off at the scene, red bagging it, bringing it back and washing it and getting it back into service as soon as possible. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, and people feel more comfortable about being at the firehouse and doing things, uh, going to calls. Uh, because we've taken extra measures to protect them. Apparatus report, we have a couple repairs coming up and we're gonna be uh, looking at that and see what we can do. We need to replace tires on one of the trucks and I don't have enough, uh, quite enough money to cover all the tires, so I'm gonna end up talking to Tony and find out how we can do that. We might have to do a line item transfer because I do have to replace the tires every seven years and we are up. So uh, I will work with him to try to find a way to either we do a line item transfer or something. But we're stretching a lot of these lines because of COVID-19 now. So, uh, hey, Sean, on those tires, yes. can that wait till the next fiscal year? Uh, that's oh, already I'm, find out. I'm trying to find out because I know they're up in June. So uh, we are working on that as we speak. Okay. So I'm trying to do that. If I can carry the money over, it would help me uh, big for next year. So I don't kill the tire budget rate on the first uh, week of the year, of the new year. Okay. Um, engine three. If you guys keep going down your reports, I'm gonna actually have some pictures I can show you of Engine 3 being built. You just have to be able to pull it up. So, uh, I'd like to come back to that line item and I can share this with you to actually see uh, the truck being built. If that's okay. And that's all I have for my report. Assistant Chief Bonner, do you have uh, do you have a report? So, um, as the chief said a few minutes ago, things have been down compared to what it was Friday, though. Um, between those three calls and our two calls, actually. Um, besides that, um, everything seems the same. It's just been slow, which is a good thing. So we haven't had anyone to go to houses or expose anything. So it's true now, right? We are catching up on fire reports. Um, uh, so we submitted a big batch uh, about a week and a half ago. States okay. so we are catching up on all that during this pandemic. That's good. Yeah, definitely. Okay, fire marshal's report. Um, I worked on the, I, I wrapped up the Seymour Road fire. I did uh, seven plan reviews, nine inspections. I'm doing uh, like, uh, if the restaurant is closed, we can go out there and do an inspection. I was at the Country Club of Woodbridge because it's not open. Uh, any place there's not people, I'm doing, I'm doing inspections if they call. Uh, and then, uh, I get the report for all the town buildings, sprinkler system, fire alarm. I review all of those, and then if there's deficiencies, I have to talk to Brad, and we get them fixed. Uh, and the only other one was the JCC, uh, uh, their sprinkler report. It was time for them to replace the gauges on the sprinkler, so I called their maintenance guy, and he got it done Friday. Other than that, uh, it's quiet. It's really quiet. That's, that's about it. Uh, we're going to start doing online fire marshals in service. And one of the classes is virtual inspections. Mm. 
<laughs> so uh, I'll let you know how that goes. Uh, I think it's June 11th. So you're gonna have a virtual class with a virtual inspection. I guess so. Yeah, that I that just came out today. It's very meta. I didn't get any phone calls about anybody opening any outdoor seating or outdoor restaurant. But I I've heard nothing. So I, I don't know what what's happening. You know, I got a, a, a an email from the state fire marshal's office Wednesday last week and Friday. This is what to do, but nobody called, so. I'm good. Well, I'm still, if they, the, outside serve, the outside dining is also very limited, right? 50% of capacity, six feet apart, all that? Right. Um, and then I gather you have to be the enforcer of that, or no? They didn't say that. They didn't say okay. that. That that might be a health department thing. It might be, but when this business first started, they reduced and they they initially reduced the occupancies. I know the city of New Haven was sending your your former colleagues out to do the to do the uh, enforcement because the fire marshals are, are used to uh, evaluating occupancies, right? Yeah, well, I know they can give them more work. I'm just, no, I do it. In, we only have one restaurant with outdoor seating in town. Which one's that? Tapas. Is that Saloon. Tapas. Yeah, Saloon. Saloon. Yeah. No, Soul Tapas, not Saloon. They don't have outdoor. Is it the one on Bradley Road? It's Saloon. Yeah. Yes, they yeah, have Saloon. Seen. Yeah. He's yeah. got it. He's the only one in town that I that that I did a outdoor liquor license for. But he's had that for a while. I get an email from him every day about carry out. <laughs> so, okay. So I think right. it's important to know that Joe's doing a lot for me and he's uh, uh, getting the firehouse, uh, keeping the firehouse clean along with uh, a couple of the other guys. And they're doing truck crew and uh, stuff during the day. So we don't have to have a bunch of guys there all one clip. So. And we, I pick up the FEMA stuff on Tuesdays. Yes. So. Okay. Okay. We have a uh, executive session on the agenda, but we did not set up any uh, any means for doing so on this Zoom call. Um, so we will pass that item. Actually, um, pictures up if you want to take a look at them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And if you need, Sean, if, if you do need an executive session uh, before the next meeting, we'll call a special meeting for that purpose. All right. So can you guys see that? Now we can. See the, I don't know. Can you see the body of the truck, the aluminum? Yeah. Can you blow it up a little bit? multiple monitors here. I can't blow it up right now. Oh, but I can. Okay. There's on the top of the screen is view options. There we go. Wow. So that's the body of the truck. That's where the equipment goes. Um, that's where the, the water tank is good to go into the truck. It sits in the middle of that. So these pictures are actually a couple weeks old, so the truck is a little farther uh, forward. Engine three. Uh, here the truck, on the other side. They're already past that. I know they went back to it. They're just talking about how it's coming along. So, Sean, is this is this from your uh, virtual inspection? Uh, no, this is this is normal. Uh, and we would get an update on where they are, and they send pictures. 
and then we'll, we will go down there to do the actual inspection. What we're looking at here is this is the pump module. This is where the this is where the pump goes, 2250 pump, all the gauges and everything else. So this is between the cab and the body. This this is the frame of it. Oh, there's a cardinal out there. What'd you say? That's the front, that's the cab for the truck. The officer side of the cab. That's when they're building it. You can see it's all custom built. It's not, it's not just the standard thing. So, um, this is the truck when it's painted. So it comes off the line. So they do everything in pieces. So they do the cab, they do the body, they do the pump house. That's inside the cab. So you can see, you see all the wiring that this whole thing entails. So there's all the wiring in here and all up in here. When's this due to arrive, Sean? Well, I'm going to get a probably an update this week. I'm thinking probably sometime in uh, June. So they're moving quite along with it, though. See, there's just the screen right here that controls it. Um, the truck's moving along. It's um, about uh, all I got, guys. What's the next step? Next step is they got to put it all together and uh, wire the body, put the water tank in, put the pump in, and basically close it all up. So hopefully sometime in June. Usually it takes about six weeks to build a truck, like seven weeks. So, so that's usually the point where you go down to, uh, to, to give it a detailed inspection, right? Probably, it'd probably be sometime later in June, but with this whole thing, I don't, so, know, I don't know how we're going to do this yet. So we're going to be talking about it. Okay. All right. Um, I don't have any course. Next item on the agenda is correspondence. I don't have any. My next meeting date is June 15th. 
Hopefully that'll work for everyone and we'll work out the technical difficulties. Thank you for your uh, patience today. And that's all I've got. Is there a motion Julie, to adjourn? I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. That's Mr. Mandel and Mr. Sufreen on the motion and the second. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. That sounds like it was unanimous. Okay, thank you.